Welcome to the video, everyone. Uh, my name is Brooke Kidding. I'm the founder of the High Ticket E-Commerce Incubator. Before we get started, so these are five niches that I think would be great options to start a store in in 2023. They're not the be-all end-all. So if you've been considering a different niche or if you've recently started a store that is not one of these, don't worry, it's going to be fine. Um, there are honestly hundreds, if not thousands, of niches that you could pick and have success in. These are just five that I think will do particularly well in 2023, but there honestly may be many that I'm not considering or missing altogether that will do far better than these. These are just five that I picked out that seemed obvious to me. And just keep in mind, like this is one step of the process. So um, the first step is we want to have a business set up, and then we want to pick our niche, which this video is on, five niche options. And after that, we want to find suppliers in our niche. We want to set up a demo store. We want to close suppliers, onboard suppliers, set up our ads, start focusing on CRO, SEO, uh, email, and then eventually build out a team to remove you from the day-to-day -day business. So just keep in mind, this is only one aspect of that, and it's the niche selection aspect, which is the second part. I do have a coaching program where I'll work directly with you on the entire process. We have seven hours a week of coaching calls per week. You have direct access to me throughout the whole thing. Um, if you're interested in that, I will link the... Um, application call below. If you're interested, you can book a call with my team. We'll go over everything with you and see if it's a fit. But otherwise, um, again, don't fret if you have not selected one of these niches. These are just a few of many that I think can work. Um, if you could please subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to start posting more and more content in the coming weeks. So if you could hit uh, subscribe, watch halfway through the video, it will really help my content perform well on YouTube, and I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, enjoy the video, and we will dive right in. What's going on guys? So welcome to the top five niches for high ticket e-com in 2023. Just gonna go through a list, but before we get started, just wanna go over some basic um, market research info that I think will be helpful background for you. So first, if I can figure out how to change it, there we go, market considerations. So we wanna look at the current market when we're assessing like which niches to go in. Um, and just kind of look at the, the global scale of the market, what's going on, and, and use that to inform our decision-making process. So uh, currently right now, economic climate, um, lots of people are talking about a recession. We borderline already are in one, but uh, many people are worried about this. So that's obviously going to affect buyer behavior, um, this types of decisions buyers make, how much money they're willing to spend, everything like this. Another thing is it will affect ad co costs. So all these big companies that have warehouses with hundreds of million dollars of inventory, so think Home Depot, Walmart, Best Buy, all these places with all this inventory. Um, when things get tough, like in a recession, one of the first things you're gonna do is look to cut ad costs, which actually can benefit us because um, those will often be, depending on your niche, those will be your competitors. And if they have these unlimited advertising budgets through like their, their investors and everything like that, and they, they can really spend as much as they want on ads. But if they start cutting ads because they're worried about a recession and not being able to sell their stuff, and they're worried about sitting on all this inventory, one of the places they'll look to, to cut costs is ads. It actually can make it cheaper for us. And since we don't have any inventory, it's actually very beneficial. So um, keep that in mind that our business model is actually, I, I've wrote a thread on this on Twitter, you can go check it out, but um, Obviously, like recessions will affect us in, in the amount of things buyers are um, purchasing online. But that said, we don't really have a lot of risk. We don't have inventory, so it's not as big of a deal. And there are advantages such as cheaper ad costs. Inventory, so the supply chain the last couple of years has been a bit of a nightmare globally. So um, one thing you want to keep in mind is if um, it's not going to be an issue for every niche. But what, what I would say is it's better to have more products on your store than less. Because the more products you have, um, the higher chances that some of them are going to be in stock, and then therefore you're not dealing with inventory issues. Um, just going to touch briefly on the benefits of a broad store versus narrow store. So a broad store, um, you can sell as many products as you want, and you have unlimited suppliers to contact. So you could contact like thousands of suppliers, and you're never going to run out. And what makes a good store is good suppliers. So if you have unlimited suppliers to contact, you can keep reaching out to them. Um, you're eventually going to get some good ones. The downside of that is is, is not as strong for SEO. So um, a very niche store that specializes in one thing is going to have a lot easier time ranking for categories um, of a product than you who's selling everything. So the, on, a, on a very broad store, you're very reliant upon paid ads. That's what I've done. Um, I've had success with that. Um, but sometimes I do wish that I went a little bit more, more narrow for SEO reasons. The other thing is, um, if you're doing a broad store, you're not going to be an expert in any one particular item because you're selling so much different stuff. Where if you specialize in one thing, you become an expert in that one thing and you can actually provide your user a better experience. So benefits of a broad store, unlimited suppliers, um, you're bound to kind of get some. So I would say there's less risk. Like if you told me, 
Uh, Brooke, you have to build a store for $5,000 a month profit in the next six months. I would just build a general store and contact as many high-end suppliers as I could and run um, low funnel, Google Ads to them, and I would be there. Virtually guaranteed, I think. Um, but with a narrow store, you might be limited in number of suppliers, so there's an added element of risk. But if you become the go-to store for a particular product type, the upside is huge. And uh, you can rank SEO, which will give you organic traffic and therefore lower your acquisition cost. So um, I would say narrow is a bit more risky. Broad is a little bit less risky just because you can contact them a number of suppliers. But there are downsides. And um, yeah, I would say it's, it's more of a safe bet, but probably higher. Um, I wouldn't even say higher or, or lower overall potential because you could eventually turn into like a huge powerhouse, like a a wafer, a barbecue guys, like hundreds of million dollars of sales, but that will obviously take a very, very long time to get to that point. Um, where if you're a narrow store, you can start ranking organically in the first couple of years and you can be making a lot, a lot of money quite quickly. So one thing that I would actually recommend is you start with a bit of a broader store, maybe not so broad that you're selling everything, but like, uh, well, I'll go through some examples with you later in the video, but if you start broad, you can then narrow um, in over time. So for example, Let's say you start selling um, home fitness stuff. And then over time, you start catering towards a specific product in home fitness, let's say rowers. Then you can start home fitness and you can narrow it on rowers as you go. Or you could you can narrow it on a product type, so rowers, treadmills, bikes, etc., or a particular demographic within your niche. So let's say you're selling fitness stuff and a lot of your customers are elderly people. Then you can start having, okay, now my store is gonna be fitness stuff for elderly people at home. And that's a more niche version of just home fitness. So you can narrow in on the product type or narrow in the demographic. And that's a great way to kind of like start broad and then go in, uh, narrow your focus over time. Um, some hot niches now. So just based on the current market trends, elderly, uh, the older pop the population is aging. Um, elderly people have lots of money. They're usually buying things that they need, not want. So that point. Um, and in a recession, it's, that's an important point is you want to sell things that people need not things that they're like considering and, and just want when they have extra money. If you sell needs, a recession will play less of a factor for you. Um, survivalist niche, many people are worried about the government for whatever reason. Um, so survivalist niche is things that like they could essentially live on their own. So things like generators, um, power supplies, the ability to like grow and cook their own food, um, things like this, very big. Eco home, so this is things like uh, solar, kits or like home wind turbines or EV chargers or e-bikes, um, huge expanding niche. Home fitness we touched on. Um, it is a bit of a, a want, not a need, but lots of people um, just kind of like doing things at home now, which is fine, but that's kind of the last three things. So home fitness, uh, doing work from home and home cooking are all kind of like, they have been on the rise for the last couple of years, um, but I, I think that that, will, that trend will continue and we will look at some of the, the graphs in the next slides to show you. So, number five, home fitness. Um, some advantages of home fitness, there's endless, endless product types, very high margins usually, tons of demand, and there's lot, lots of opportunity to niche now. So we get a home fitness and we can narrow in on our product type or narrow in on a specific category. Disadvantages, it can be quite competitive, and it is wants, not needs. So you can look at the graph here for just home gym. This is obviously just one product type of many within this, but you can see like it was consistent, consistent, huge, um, huge peak here a couple of years ago, and then it's kind of trailed off since, but it still looks to be above the baseline, which is good. Um, yeah, so here's some product types within that niche. So you have home strength, so that's things like home gyms, barbells, dumbbells, garage gyms, you can put bench presses in there, things like that. Home cardio, so treadmills, ellipticals, bikes, rowing machines, stair masters, rope climbers, um, combat sports, so MMA, box equipment, that's kind of like a that could be a non-competitive category within the home fitness space. I haven't seen many stores doing that stuff, but there's definitely opportunity. And I would assume it's growing actually. And then you have the home health aspect of home fitness, like saunas, massage chairs, cold plungers, uh, body composition analyzers, stadium meters, things like this. Um, and there's honestly many, many more that I haven't listed here, but it's a very broad niche, but you can kind of like go narrow in on any one of these as you go. Next, <clears throat> home cooking. So again, very similar advantages to home fitness actually. So endless product types, very high margins usually, high demand, lots of opportunity to niche down. So instead of, um, so here you can niche down on like a particular product type like kitchen appliances or like fridges or like things like this. Um, 
Again, disadvantages, it's usually a want, but maybe not as much as home fitness because if you're moving, you're gonna get appliances. It's not like you're just not gonna have a kitchen. And it can be quite competitive. Now, if we look at kitchen appliances, we can see the demand is kind of all over the place. There's not really any trend. It's down right now. I'm not sure why that is, but um, that's something to keep in mind. Some different product types. We have the outdoor kitchen aspects, so outdoor grills, ice makers, outdoor kitchen islands, pizza ovens, wine coolers, you have indoor kitchen, so appliances, fridges, uh, appliance packages, dishwashers, juicers, coffee machines, microwaves, bread makers, um, ranges, range hoods, etc. Next, we have survivalist prepper. So advantage is very hot market right now. People are worried about, you know what? Um, relatively non-competitive, it is a need. Like it's probably the highest need. Like people are literally fearing for uh, their lives or whatever. So they, whatever whatever it may be, it's, it's, a, it's a need. People are willing to spend money on stuff. Disadvantages here, the, the items in this category are usually lower cost. There are less product categories and demand really varies. So you can see if we look at the term generator, there's like these random, just like huge spikes. But overall, we can see a consistent trend up as well. And there's a ton of demand. So some product uh, ideas for this category. Uh, we have generators, wood stoves, backup power supplies, and then we have, that's kind of the power portion, and then survival is like camping equipment, survival kits, first aid supplies, uh, many things I'm, I'm not mentioning here, but these are just some basic ideas that can get you started. Next, we have the elderly niche. So again, it's a growing market. There's lots of product types. These are definitely needs, not wants. Elderly people usually have a lot of money. The products in this category are usually very high margin. The disadvantages are these people often struggle using the internet, and there's probably a low repeat purchase rate, if I had to guess. Um, maybe not. Mm. I'm, I'm guessing yes, but I'm, I'm not sure. We can see there's a consistent, this is just a one product in this category. We can see there's a huge um, increase in demand over time. Um, it is a bit seasonal, I imagine, because these things are probably more useful in the summer. So one thing we want to keep in mind then is we want to find product types that are peaking in the winter to help combat that. Um, just different product types. We have mobility scooter, the transportation aspect, mobility scooters, wheelchairs, stretchers, and we have kind of home care. So hospital beds, lifts, lift chairs, wheelchairs, lifts, ramps. Again, there's many, many other things that I haven't listed here. Um, pool, assisted devices, um, et cetera. But these are just some main ones. And lastly, this should say, this should say two, I believe. And this should say one. I forgot the numbers, but we'll, we'll go with them. Advantages of eco-home, very, very quickly growing market, and there's relatively little competition right now. Um, the disadvantages are these are usually wants, not needs, and there are limited product types we can see here just for solar panels for home. It has absolutely skyrocketed over the last five years, um, and there's really not a lot of drop shipping stores selling these. And just to go over some different product types with you, so the power aspect, so home solar kits, home wind turbines, energy efficient generators, energy efficient wood stoves, and then there's also the transportation aspect, so things like e char EV chargers, e-bikes, and then I'm sure many other things that I'm not currently considering. You could even put like drones or something there. Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, those are the kind of five categories that I see as being high potential for this year. So we have um, home fitness, which is very broad, but you can kind of niche down as you go. You have home cooking, also very broad, but you can niche down as you go. Um, what was it? survivalist kind of type things, people worried. Um, they might have to like be able to live on their own. So things like generators, um, survivalist kits, first aid kits, etc. cetera. Uh, we have the, what do we have? Elderly niche. So things like home care, um, transportation for elderly people. And last, we have the eco home. So kind of like a move towards sustainable energy and renewable power supply, which is lots of things like here. But that's all I had. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Again, if you took any value from this video at all, I would greatly appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button below, um, follow my channel, and um, hit, the, hit the like button if you took any value. Again, I will post the link for my coaching program below the video. But thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon.